Thank you for continuing to listen to American Medicine today. I'm alongside Ethan Euchre. Happy to be here. Yes, and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti. Hi. 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 Healthcare continues to be one of the most politicized issues in America today. Joining us right now to discuss his ideas on how to fix the broken system is returning guest Dr. Dean Waldman, board certified pediatrician and author of Curing the Cancer in U.S. Healthcare. Thank you for being here, Dr. Dean. It is my great pleasure. You say that fixing the system starts with the root cause, which is cancer, as you call it, in the federal bureaucracy. Can you explain mm. that for us? Sure. If you think about a cancer, colon, breast, brain, what it is, is a normal cell that gets out of control from the body and it stops doing whatever it's supposed to do. It starts grabbing all the energy it can possibly find in order to do one thing, which is to grow and expand and spread out. Mm -hmm. If you use that analogy and say, well, what is the purpose of any bureaucracy is to help the parts of that system do whatever they're supposed to do. It doesn't have any function of its own. It's supposed to help all the other ones. Because it's taken a change, though, if I'm right, because instead of being helpful, bureaucracy has actually turned into stumbling blocks. Mm. That's exactly right. And therefore, as I just said, well, suppose healthcare were a patient and walked in my office and I just practice good medicine on the patient. If you first ask yourself, well, what has the attending doctors that have been treating this patient healthcare done for the last bunch of years, 50 years, is they've treated symptoms and Another never problem. sat down and said, okay, what is the cause of the problem? And so that's what I did as though they were x-rays and blood tests on patient healthcare. It came fairly obvious that the federal bureaucracy, instead of being the helper, as you say, Kimberly, yes. it is actually mm -hmm. the obstructor, the consumer mm -hmm. of more health care dollars than anything else in the entire system. The bureaucracy is taking over a trillion dollars of what the public calls health care spending. Mm -hmm. They're taking that money and using it for actuaries and accountants and Lobbyist. consultants and billers and coders and lawyers and I, you know, navigators, the Affordable Care Act, had to create a whole new bureaucratic class called mm -hmm. Navigator, mm -hmm. whose only function is to try and help us get through an impossibly complex system that they, the bureaucracy, created. created. Well, <laughs> Why don't you tell us what state scare is? If the federal bureaucracy is a cancer, I would say, okay, what would I do if I were a cancer doctor? The answer is I would cut out the cancer. And now you and I know and everybody understands that we can't have no bureaucracy because there has to be some organizing principle, some basic you know, sort of central repository of data and help money flow mm -hmm. from one place to the other. But that should help access to care. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of healthcare systems. If the feds are the problem, then the solution is to get the feds out of healthcare. It means that Washington is no longer applying its one-size-fits-all. Mm -hmm. The people in their states will decide what they want in terms of an organizing principle, or for that matter, if they want an organizing principle. If you think about it, California has got 39 million people. Canada, the whole country, has got 37 million people. Wow. I say, well, why shouldn't California be allowed to have whatever health care system they want? Now, if they want a single payer, that's not for me to say California or 39 million Californians mm -hmm. uh, should be able to uh, chart their own course. But here's the Go problem. Ahead. When you bring that up, say they do do that. Unfortunately, the individuals that want that, they hate it, they leave, and then they come to, say, Florida, mm -hmm. and then they try to bring those same socialistic, idiotic ideals, and they ruin our system here. Okay, but... How do we keep <laughs> them there? <laughs> but, uh, okay, I'm with you. But the key here is that Florida and Texas and the other places that don't want Washington and its socialistic approaches, we have no choice. You have no choice. Mm -hmm. I will say if those people with socialistic tendencies and want the government to be in charge instead of the patient to be in charge, mm -hmm. and they're in the majority, if Florida has a majority of people mm -hmm. who want single payer, I have to say, go live and be well. I resent that, though, <laughs> because, <laughs> because the major trouble is they come 
to the state with the same ideas. If you if you create a mess in your state, you should not be able you should not be allowed to leave the area. <laughs> remember, Live with it. Yeah, that, exactly. But that's that's what remember right now because of that situation of the the religion situation uh, in in I mean the the abortion situation in Alabama, Alabama. Mm-hmm. the California decide that they are going to ban anybody to travel to to Alabama for a year. Now, if they can, the the government can ban their population to travel to another state. The state can do the same thing. We don't receive the Democrats that they destroy that state. They need to stay there, fix it themselves, correct the problem, and make make it better for themselves. They don't need to come here and ruin the things. I'm I'm looking. I was the other day in in a in a CBS pharmacy. I walk there, and I have the most rude. Totally irresponsible with a God blasted no knowledge pharmacist <laughs> to really pushing me around because of a prescription, because I request a prescription, a path to sign it. And then when I ask her and I say, From where are you? Where where you were trained? I say New York State. And I say, No wonder. Why don't you go back there? If we had a free market, which is what I am strongly recommending, which is to get the government out between position, deciding position between the doctor and the patient. If you, Dr. Bonatti, had a choice to say, instead of your insurance company mandating that you had to go to that pharmacy or get that drug, you could turn around and say, hey, I'm going to vote with my feet. I don't want to go to whatever CVS or Walgreens. I'm going to go to some independent pharmacy and I'll get what I want at a price I can afford. The key to this is to reduce the government's uh, role yeah. mm-hmm. in this and let the consumers in the free market decide what is best. We'd have very large HSAs with our money in there and the safety net people would have some mm-hmm. state money in there and they would be responsible to pay for things and to buy simple, a very high deductible catastrophic insurance. They choose whatever it is yeah. and they're responsible. There are around 1,400 conditions that harm human beings' health. There are 68 thousand billing codes. Why do we have that? The answer because is because of the, the bureaucracy AMA. has exploded. Mm-hmm. The AMA is more than partially to blame for that. So oh, hopefully what, that, well, that's what I was going to get at. When we're saying that there has to be some rules or something, never, never, never put the AMA no, in charge. No, I, yes, Amen. I agree. It. And and we'd love to have you back on again at some point. Sure. Thank you so much, <laughs> Dr. Dean Waldman, board certified pediatrician and author of Curing the Cancer in U.S. Healthcare. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks, Dr. Thank Dean. Thank you. Thank you for listening and watching American Medicine Today.